Okay, welcome to, uh, I guess, a special edition of the LL Roundtable. We were sitting around getting ready to do our weekly basketball show, and look who showed up. Jared Odrick, who you may remember from the NFL, you may remember from Penn State, you may remember from Lebanon High, you may remember from acting, race car driving. He's a man of the world. Jared, we're just going to sit here and talk a little bit. How are you doing, man? Not bad. Yeah, Not bad. That's good. And you came here for coffee. I came here for passenger coffee. Um, and so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very we, subtle. We, uh, yeah, no, I come down here to Lancaster to get caffeinated and watch people walk by the big window. Um, it makes you think about things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. you're not alone in that regard. So anyway, I'm Mike Gross. Jason Grande is alongside, and we're going to talk a little bit about Leaven High Sports, maybe, and some other things that are going on with Jared. A lot of things go on with Jared. But let's start with this, because you're a Leaven High graduate, and you've stayed connected to the school and the community, right? Mm -hmm. They have not won a football or basketball varsity game in a couple of years. Uh, what do you see? What frustrates you? What do you what what's the deal? What what do you think's going on there? Well, you know, part of our conversation when we when I first walked in was really talking about uh, you know, the the legitimacy of the the social and sports critic, right? Which is a, a position that you guys are very familiar with. Right? Yeah. And, and which so, you're diving into at this moment. No, exactly. <laughs> and that's kind of the the thing is that it's um you know, it's a it's a position that, that, that becomes necessary because you, you end up developing a perspective outside of the, you know, yeah. then from being on the team. And when you're in a subjective position of, of being in and a part of it, sometimes you can't remove yourself and see things objectively. And I think that's one big thing that a lot of coaches, uh, but especially players, struggle with is, uh, you know, really relating to or speaking to the observer. Blinders. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and I think plenty of times that's necessary for especially yeah. young developing athletes yeah. is to have blinders on, right? It's it's almost like you do kind of want to make yourself one dimensional in order for your, your yourself to succeed in a linear fashion, right? But um, now you could have played the NFL longer than you did. Probably. Is this one of the reasons why you didn't? Which is what? That you did not want to be one dimensional. Yeah, yeah. that's the point it got to eventually. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and so I started getting, I started seeing myself becoming vindictive or angry right. within yeah. the locker room. And I didn't want to become that guy, you know, because I saw that guy in plenty of other, you know, social spaces, but locker rooms. And, uh, you know, I heard myself getting, getting upset, right, at the way things were going, uh, yeah. as opposed to the way. I was playing, right? I was I was making uh, a conversation with uh, the general manager David Caldwell at the time of the Jaguars on, you know, the, on the sideline uh, at a practice in Jacksonville, and I started asking about their free agent acquisitions, and you could tell he did not want to talk with me about those <laughs> things. That he wanted me to focus on practice, yeah. and uh, and there were plenty of other things that kind of you know warned me that hey, maybe yeah. it's time to to exit stage left, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, and that's kind of the position that I feel that I'm in with, with Lebanon High School sports is that I've kind of become this observer uh, because I've continued my competitive career, you know. And so trying to uh, talk with uh, friends and family and other, you know, former coaches and school officials, um, you know, about Lebanon High School sports, y you always get this feeling that, you know, maybe I should be doing something more. Mm. Um, you know, everybody always says coaching. I you mean, mean you, Jared, should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get that underlying feeling, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's because I was involved and found success in sports. But um, I'm just not sure if that's the position that uh, I would best suit uh, Lebanon High School sports in. And I think, uh, and I think it's a, maybe a similar way that you guys feel is that maybe your best position that you feel is kind of a social observer and critic. And to critique that and to inject different thoughts and conversations into uh, the minds and social sphere of Lebanon and Lancaster. Yeah, yeah, that is. There, there's a piece of that going on there. Jason, you were a very good basketball player in high school through your sophomore season. Yeah. <laughs> People may not remember that. Yeah, you were yeah. part of a league championship team. Yeah. Um, what is your fondest memory of that experience? Um, yeah, I'd probably have to say how how much camaraderie camaraderie we had uh from all the different uh 
angles that we approached the sport because that year, uh, you know, we had guys like uh, Nico Trakov, right? Um, you know, I forgot about that. Yeah. Eastern European six-five mm. shooting guard, mm -hmm. right? It was like, where did you come from? <laughs> um, and then Franklin Manaya, yeah. you know, comes from the Bronx. Uh, and transfers to our school, you know, from St. Raymond's and starts playing with us and, you know, has had a huge, huge, uh, you know, cultural impact on our team. Um, and then, uh, you know, then all the other, you know, Lebanon characters uh, coming together to make that happen. And, and, you know, Blackburn coming from from Carlisle and obviously him having a, a certain style of, of coaching that he was familiar with up there and then combining that all together to make that happen. That was you know, it was kind of a, a powder keg at times of <laughs> different, uh, you know, different uh, avenues and desires and goals, but we made it work. It was cohesive. I think that team took great pride in uh, how, I guess, gritty uh, we were. And I think that's the way that a lot of Lebanon teams like to, you know, describe themselves. Yeah, they've had a lot of success uh, in basketball. You guys won the league title, uh, and, right? And I, 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 that was pretty, that was a pretty memorable, and you were a sophomore, kind of a big, Kind of a big yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, so so um, a lot of people say it's tough to win at Lebanon. Is, it, is is that is that that's not good enough? Obviously, but is it fair? Is it tough? To, are there are there challenges at Lebanon that are unique to Lebanon? Yeah, well, that are unique to Lebanon. No, I actually had this conversation with Mike Bechtel. Um, if you remember Mike Bechtel, course, another yeah. Lebanon mm -hmm. Lancaster legend. Um, now an attorney in Lebanon. Yeah, yeah, and he's an attorney in Lebanon, and so he sees a lot of uh, different transactions that go on in town. And, you know, I had a pretty candid conversation with him, and hopefully, you know, he doesn't mind me, you know, mentioning that we had a good conversation. <laughs> um, but, you know, Mike and I ran into each other at a coffee shop. Um, Again, and, it's a subtlety. Yeah. And, and so um, we, uh, we ended up talking about, like, it, it's a difficult thing for a lot of, uh, I think, sports writers especially, and I think the most consistent sports writer in Lebanon County has been uh, Jeff Falk. Yeah, just because you're talking family. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, um, I think, you know, he tried speaking to the same issue of winning at Lebanon and um, the Lebanon High School football program. And I think it's difficult to build culture when it seems like a majority of the downtown core is a big government subsidy. Right. It seems like a lot of people um, are there. Okay, now that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Either. I think yeah. uh, I think there's a lot of people that are there or that have moved there for uh, certain subsidies, and I think a lot of people in the downtown core who own properties, um, you know, kind of take advantage of that. And I think it's difficult when the core of your town, um, both like physically and culturally, um, consists of something that isn't true productive culture or kind of not foreign in a in a cultural sense but foreign inorganic that, how about there that? we go yeah. thank you thank you you fresh you, writer yeah you've been writing way more than me and that's that, that i was hoping i could get a a word or two thank you it's just yeah it i think that's at the core of it and i think what the outer shell is is cultural um i think somebody like jeff falk and other people are scared to point to those things. And he recently wrote an article about Lebanon's struggles, but it just seemed like he danced around the words uh, economics, um, English as a second language, uh, and not only a lot of the students that are English as a second language at Lebanon, um, there's a variety of in cultures within that English as a second language. Oh, not everybody's okay. coming just from Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic, which is a, a lot of, uh, English as a second language students that I grew up with, right? right? And so people are coming from South America, people are coming from Central America, people mm. are coming from Miami, right? Yeah. And I recently spoke uh, with a few people that informed me that uh, only 10% of Lebanon's graduates, Lebanon High's graduates, started from kindergarten and graduated through the Lebanon School District, mm. right? That's that it's so transient, yeah. Right in that town, and from what I, from what I'm told, right now, this is you know, uh, uh, you know, speculation. What I'm told um, is that that same model almost represents itself everywhere else in Harrisburg and in York. These little, smaller core city yeah. centers uh, yeah. have similar things going on, and I think that goes back to economics. But I'm not sure the breadth of this 
discussion, the breadth of this, yeah. you know, round table it's or, a big one. It's you a big know, one. but I think that's what it comes back down to is that the culture is so transient because it's a transient economy. And I think what you're seeing is uh, people that really don't care. They have 10 to 20% of their students doing all the sports, doing all the extracurriculars. Yeah. 80% of them aren't doing anything. There's yeah. no culture there. And also we need tall people. Can tall people, do I have to be the only tall person? I heard Shaq just moved into the area. Yeah. That's what I heard, okay? Yeah. Can we get more tall Could people? Happen. Yeah. Now I'm not saying Shaq that you yeah. have to go out there and start repopulating the area. <laughs> But, I mean, we need some tall people. If Shaq moves into the area, then you look like a small <laughs> Exactly, right? <laughs> the idea that Lebanon could go winless in this basketball season, unthinkable before it happened. Yeah. Do you think, you sort of touched on this, are, are there not enough basketball players in the school or is it too hard to pull it together and hold it together? What do you think the, the problem is? Too hard to pull what together? All the get everyone out there, get everyone to play, get, get everyone good involved. participation. Yeah, get participation. Good, you know. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a a you know a core of. It seems like the core of basketball players from the '90s that have kids and the 2000s that have kids. They're all at Cedar Crest, yeah. right? They're all they well, all yeah. They all move to the crust. Suburban thing, yeah. correct? They all move to the yeah. crust of town. Mike Bechtel is a good example. There we go, Tim yeah. Spiro. Where yeah. where does our athletic director's kids go to school? <laughs> is it Lebanon? No. no, nobody who has the culture or the background of Lebanon sports That's is at Lebanon anymore. Yeah. And if they are, they're school officials, but then their kids go elsewhere, right? I think these are sensitive topics that people don't speak about, but I, I mean, at least within the, 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 the ecosystem or the, the social sphere that is Lebanon Lancaster. And, you know, is the same thing happening in, with McCaskey? Is the same thing happening with the big schools in York? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe because it's a similar situation. All right, let's let's talk about what's going on with you. You you are always you always have a project. Yeah. What's the project? Uh, right now, it's it's making a decision on um, a race series, a race car, and a race team. Um, uh, I've been considering the Trans Am series, um, which is one of the longest standing racing series um, in America. Uh, so it's like you know. 500 horsepower plus Mustang. Yeah. You know, H pattern, uh, dog box. And then um, I've been driving uh, Porsche Cup cars. You mean like a four years. speed transmission kind of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. I thought those were. <laughs> for cars like that, I thought that was old. Long school. gone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, uh, it's, it's back and it's alive. And um, so making a decision on that, I've been speaking with a few teams down south. And then. Um, yeah, trying to figure out what else to write about. I've been studying a lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, I know you're budding a little bit of a... I shouldn't say budding. You've been yeah. doing it for a while, but you're a developing writer, right? I, I, I need to be writing more. My father, who... Uh, he, he just sent me probably about 80 pens, right? I got 80 <laughs> pens in Trying to mail. send a message? He sent a message, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know what? He's right. So. All right, anything else for Mr. Andrick? Hey, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for it's having always me. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Half an hour ago, we didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, I'm glad it did. The dude showed up on his coffee run, and uh, here we are. So, this has been a special edition of the LL Roundtable for Jason Guarante, for Mike Gross, and for Jared Audrick. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>